Hello, this is Event Pro 360 President and Co-Founder Danny Rainbow here with you again uh, to show you some details of our menu feature. In this video we'll be going through the details of how to set up the menu feature and get it ready for use at your facility. Uh, so if you use the administration link on the left side of your screen and then click on the manage settings button once you get there, uh, the manage settings page will open and uh, we'll have the menu feature details available there. On the Manage Settings page, you just want to click on your facility name, the little plus button by it to expand it here, and scroll down all the way to the bottom to the Menus item. And you can see in here I've already got a couple of uh, menus set up, but if you need to add a brand new menu, you just click on this Add Menu button, and then use the uh, name box here to type in the menu name. We'll call this one, since I've already got a 2019 and 20, we'll go with a 2020 banquet menu and you just click the add menu button and hit the save button and now that menu has been added. Uh, you can see on my menus uh, pane here I can see how many events are using each of my menus and I can always click one out of service if I want to disable the use of that for any future events. Uh, of course any past events that are already using it will will still be able to use it. Uh, but now if I expand my menus section again uh, I've got that new menu and I can expand that new menu that I created and you can see a few items below it here we've got to set up our menu categories and our menu items and then we can create any common modifiers which we'll cover in a few moments um, so menu categories uh, if you click on that pane um, there's automatically a category in there for uncategorized items but uh, we go in here and you can type right in this box below your uh, category name so if I just want to make a breakfast category I can do that and so now the breakfast category has been added um, I can go in and make a couple subcategories if I'd like so if I want to do breakfast buffet and I'm going to select that it's a subcategory of the breakfast category so now you can see that we've got our breakfast category with a breakfast buffet subcategory and maybe another breakfast a la carte category that's going to be a subcategory of the breakfast. So now we've got our main breakfast category and the two subcategories. Now you see here within each category we've got some uh, required uh, things that we need to do. We need to set the uh, default summary of charges section. So this is very important. Uh, so for banquet events we're going to say that these items are going to show up in the food section of our summary of charges. And for golf events also they will show up in the food section. Okay, so we want to make sure we do that. Uh, there are some other defaults that you're welcome to do as well. Uh, default food details category if you want these items to fall under a specific category that you already have created in your in your food details. But the most important one is probably to get that summary of charges one set. And then if you use the budget feature, uh, you'll also want to select a uh, budget category where these items go. So again, in this example, since this is a food item, it would be food. Um, so I would just go ahead and select all of these to be what I was just talking about, the food. Okay. So just as you can see, it just takes a few minutes to run through and make all these selections. So this is the first step we recommend taking with the menu feature is to get all of your categories set up for your menu. And uh, you can select a color for the category. So if I want to say maybe breakfasts are going to be this kind of this really light yellow color. Um, maybe I just want to make all the breakfast categories that same color. Okay, so we do it just like that. And then we have this track item counts button. If you watched our previous video, uh, we made an example of the plated dinners, where if, I, if this box is uh, selected, it's going to make sure that the number of items selected within this category equal the number of guests in the event. So uh, for breakfast, uh, that's probably not recommended, but we'd really recommend that for like a plated dinners or a plated luncheons uh, type of category. Okay, so we'll uncheck those for here. And if you have any uh, note text for the category, you can enter a default note for the category here as well. Um, you may not need to use that in many cases, but it's there if you would like to use it. All right, so I'm going to jump over to my 
previously created menu just to show you kind of what a full setup of categories might look like. So I'm just going to jump to my menu categories here. And so you can see all of these uh, categories are already set up in my 2019 menu. Oops. Okay, so I've got some notes in some of these. I've got different colors for them all. I've got the uh, budget section and the summary of charges section selected on all of them where the items within those are going to go. The next step is to actually create the menu items. And to uh, show you how a menu item is created, we'll actually stay right within uh, this 2019 menu. So the important thing once we start to create an item is to find the category first that it's going to go into. So I'm on the menu items page here and uh, up above we're going to select a category. So let's just say I wanted to add a breakfast item. We've got full breakfast buffets and breakfast enhancements as part of this list. So uh, here's the breakfast enhancements uh, items. I can see I've already got a number of items in here but uh, if I just wanted to add one, we'll just add a very simple example. We'll just say cereal. Okay, so here's my item adding page. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna put in is the item name. I'm gonna just call it cereal. And we wanna make sure we take our time and get all of these things set up correctly. So the menu category that it's gonna go into, it's going under breakfast enhancements, that's automatically set for me. The budget category as food is already automatically set as well. And if I want to create an item description here that always shows up with when the serial item is selected, I can do that. Okay. And I can say what the dollar amount is for this. I can have it be a per guest or a per event charge. So let's just say this is going to be five dollars per guest and I can select my tax rate on it so if you're familiar with using the system you see this is kind of like setting up a summary of charges item um, as well as a food or beverage details item all in one that's because we're putting all the information in for this item and it's going to be able to flow to any of those sections uh, I'm going to say that this is subject to our service charge and I'm going to select whether this is uh, shown on the event timeline by default so maybe in this case we want that and then this is a very important section uh, is it's asking us to show in these event page sections so we want this item to show up in the summary of charges and we also maybe want it to show up in the food details okay and so the summary of charges section for it to go into remember I already selected that on the category when we set up the breakfast category so it's already set here to flow into the food section if I want to change that and have it show up in you know AV equipment or beverage I can certainly do that and then uh, if I did need to discontinue this item I would just select out of service here okay so now the uh, item has been created um, if there are no modifiers no choices to go with the item I would simply save and close here which I'll go ahead and do that just to show you that the item has now been added uh, to my menu but uh, we said here that we're going to allow the user to choose from a variety of tasty cold cereals and we didn't put any of those choices yet so we're going to go back in to edit the item and in order to create those choices we need to use what's called a modifier and so this entire right side of the window is devoted to the modifiers uh, for an item and so as we read the description here it says to select a row um, to add or remove its options modifier options so I'm going to select a row. I'm going to select the cereal and right down here we have the add modifier button okay so you can see we have the ability to insert a common modifier or create a new modifier so a common modifier would be something that might be applied to multiple different items if it's something that might apply you might be creating another item that would use the same choice you can make it a common modifier but we'll go get into that further in just a moment uh, for in this case we're going to add a new modifier and we're just going to call it serial type Okay, and so I just click that, type that in and click tab, and we're going to say maybe we allow three choices. So I'm going to double click on the choices here. Say we give them three choices. So when you buy this uh, serial item, it allows you to, to choose three serial types to put out. So now we've got our item name, which is serial, and we've got our modifier, which is the serial type, 
Next thing we need to do is add choices. So we've got our button down here prompting us to add the choices. Uh, we're going to start typing in our uh, types of cereal that we offer. So we'll type on in and press the go button. more all right so let's say these are the five types of cereal that we offer and again we have programmed to uh, allow the user user to select three of those all right now if there's a certain upcharge for one of these this is where we could enter it let's just say the uh, lucky charms for some reason was going to be a dollar up charge we would put that in there and then anytime the lucky charms is selected it would be adding a dollar to the item price um, the other thing we can do is to select to allow extra choices um, we can say if they want to choose more than three we would charge them a dollar per extra choice okay um, so those are all options that can be programmed here again these things can also be changed right on the event page as you're uh, making the selections for the event as you're uh, choosing your modifiers you can uh, make changes to the uh, up charges and the extra choices you can even add extra custom options to the list at that time but as much of this that you know you, you want to put it in now um, so that it's just there for you when you go to select your items okay now this is where the common modifier part comes in uh, if we did want to make this a common modifier and make it something that's available to other um, menu items that are going to be on this menu uh, we could do that we would just check this box here for common and now it's going to be available uh, in that common modifier list when we create other items okay so at this point we'll save and close this item so now back on our uh, menu items page we've got our uh, serial item and if we just drop it down like this you can see it's giving us a serial type and it's got our five options it's saying that we have it set up to choose three and the lucky charms has a one dollar upcharge okay so everything is set there um, now if we go to our common modifiers just to take a look this is where you can come to edit your common modifiers so we just created the serial type common modifier that's now in here and so if we needed to make changes to that common modifier we can make changes here and it will affect um, this modifier type in whatever menu items it's attached to. So you change it in one place um, and that flows out to the other menu items that would be using this modifier. Okay, so that's the basic uh, setup for the, the menu. Again, make sure you do your categories first and then start working through your menu items, um, adding and adjusting your, your common modifiers as needed. And uh, one other thing to add is that you can make modifiers uh, within modifiers, essentially. So if I wanted to uh, go to the special case serial here, and I can, you can see that I can add modifier. Okay, so if I wanted to add a new modifier, and we could say with or without sugar. And then we would just tab over, and then we can add our choices to say yes or no. Okay. And now someone's able to select uh, one of these two options. So maybe not the greatest example for, for how uh, that would work, but you can just see that you can continue going down the list and adding more levels of modifiers uh, within these modifiers. So now if I uh, go ahead and save that, and go back into my menu items get back into the breakfast items and you'll see that that cereal item since I updated that modifier as a common modifier it's now got the with or without sugar choice um, showing on the special K as well so that is the menu setting overview. If you have any questions, uh, please keep in mind that we are here to help. Uh, Danny Rainbow and Bill Reller, you should have both of our contact information if you're an existing user. Uh, if not, uh, go to eventpro360.com and look us up. We'll be, be glad to help in any way that we can.
Thank you.